I guess, Ellen, this must have been to be expected. Do we know any more of the details of what the SEC is actually investigating? We don't know that much about the details of what exactly is prompting this uh, preliminary inquiry from the SEC. We know it's from their enforcement division, um, and we know that in response, WeWork has hired Andrew Ceresny, who's a former head of the SEC's enforcement division, and who now works in private practice as an attorney. So they, they have him on retainer. That's a sign. Um, and we also have sourcing that suggests that there is a preliminary inquiry from the SEC. But as you pointed out, no, we don't know what exactly that could be focused on. Mm -hmm. Often uh, in cases like this, Ellen, we see the regulators following a rash of lawsuits. Uh, where does WeWork stand in terms of anybody who could claim kind of harm or does there, other than, uh, you know, existing investors, I suppose, uh, are, there, are there anybody who's put their hand up to say we actually think there's been a grievance here as well? Not yet in terms of uh, investors or, or large investor lawsuits. WeWork has been peppered over the years with uh, lawsuits from former employees. In fact, there was one just maybe a few weeks ago from Adam Newman's former chief of staff who claimed basically that she had been uh, discriminated against in her job for going on maternity leave and that Adam Newman had said things like calling her maternity leave a vacation or retirement. So they've faced lawsuits before. It's been a little different than what you might expect leading up to an SEC inquiry. I think as we note in the story, given all the media attention on WeWork, it's, it's somewhat routine or expected that the SEC would be kicking the tires on a company like this. You know, WeWork has obviously had a lot of attention on it, um, a lot of uh, you know, rumors and whispers about like, you know, maybe there was something here that, that has gone wrong. So I think, I think we understand that this is, this is probably just part of um, you know, the enforcement division doing their job, but it, and we don't know whether it will lead to anything more formal. But but um, we do understand that there is an inquiry in process. Well, um, and, and, and remind ourselves as well, Ellen, that being private doesn't necessarily shield you from SEC violations or penalties. Can you give us any precedence here? Right. I mean, Theranos is a great example, right? This is a company that was private, but whose uh, CEO or former CEO and, and founder, Elizabeth Holmes, faced um, penalties from the SEC for uh, misleading investors in, in the process of fundraising, even though the company is not public. This is something that the SEC does pay attention to. Many people sometimes think if you're private, you can kind of do what you want with your financial information. I think that's, that's not always the case. And, and we do pay a lot of attention to when SEC officials come out saying that they think think they should be as a, as a division or as an organization paying more attention to financial workings in the private sector. It was, of course, the company's own prospectus that raised eyebrows, um, including um, accounting metrics that are unknown to any other business, um, as well as some strange jargon. Should this have been caught before everything unraveled? Well, it's interesting if you look back at the um, draft S-1 filings that you can see on the SEC website, um, as you mentioned, a, a very infamous metric that WeWork used early on in some of its financial documents was this term community-adjusted EBITDA, which they said means the profitability of a, an individual office location that WeWork uses. That's a new metric. No one has ever used it before. And in fact, they ended up cutting it from the, S, uh, the S1. You can see it in early versions of the draft, and then it, it drops out in the drafts somewhere around May or June and doesn't make it into the final prospectus. So it's clear that they've spent some time trying to figure out what uh, the best way to present themselves in the S1 was, but it, it does seem like that may end up being something that uh, drew the attention of the SEC. Um, you know, yeah. their prospectus was something that was um, very, very closely looked at and, and kind of controversial.